Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. everyone, it's me, Demetra K of the Demetra K Show here on YouTube and a proud contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel. If you could please do me a favor and subscribe to all channels and like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. So, oh, what a tangled web they weaved. Those three heifers, also known as thieves. I am talking about the leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement, Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Melina Abdullah. They are accused of, and including their whole organization, accused of stealing money from donations to buy a $6 million house in Southern California, Studio City to be exact, where it is said that it is six bedrooms, six bathrooms, enough to park 20 cars, and it's just, you know, an estate to die for. They even said that Marilyn Monroe and Humphrey Rogard visited the estate at one point in time. Okay, so you guys get the point, and it is quite the monstrosity of real estate. Okay, so that house was purchased in October of 2020 after the George Floyd protest. You guys know George Floyd was murdered and the whole world went nuts with protests due to how he was murdered and all of that. Okay, so Black Lives Matter, the organization, saw a huge influx of cash. And so with that, they, being the leaders, decided to go buy this house. Now, it should also be said that Patrice Cullors who was at the time the executive uh, CEO or something like that of Black Lives Matter, she came under scrutiny for purchasing like $3.2 million of real estate. So it was like four houses all over the United States, right? Okay, so shortly after she came under scrutiny for that, she quit. And she quit saying, well, I'm gonna go focus on my books and you know my speaking engagements and things like that. All right, and so they also had a YouTube channel that is private. You can't find it, by the way. But they being Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and uh, Melina uh, Abdullah, they sat on the patio one day, uh, on their patio at this house discussing, you know, just the things that transpired. And this is part of the conversation that they had. Now, again, the video, you cannot find it because it is private. Okay, so this is what some of the stuff that they said. And this is Alicia speaking. For me, the hardest moments have been the right-wing media machine just leveraging literally all its weight against me, against our movement, against BLM, the organization. I, and I'm some weeks out now from a lot of noise, so I have more perspective, right? While I was in it, I was in survival mode, okay? And so she also, well, someone else went on to say this. And it's actually Melina. She said, I think they've attempted to counsel us, but they have not been successful in counseling us. Uh, she says, they've attempted to say, and I'm just going to say it. She brought some damn houses. We're going to counsel her. And then Garza cut in with a comment seemingly addressing, addressed to cr critics. Y'all don't know shit about what it takes to live in a box here. Okay. So it should also be said that Patrice Colors, which you can't find this video either, she, I guess, was in the house and she's baking her auntie's uh, peach cobbler and it's, it, it says that it was intense and she's, you know, I guess she's trying to be a cooking star or whatever. So she was in the house. That video cannot find. So the, uh, her channel or uh, video was called Patrice Tries, right? So she's going to try to bake her grandma or auntie's peach cobbler, right? All right. I don't see how they justify buying a $6 million house to do that. So... It has come out because they tried to do this in secret that they purchased this house. And so there was a memo floating around the organization and it said things like this. Can we kill the story to our angle? Needs to be deflate ownership of the property. The memo includes bullet points explaining that campus is part of cultural arm of the organization, potentially as an influencer house 
where abolition plus base content is produced by artists and creatives. Another bullet is headed accounting slash 990 modifications and reads in part, need to first make sure it's legally okay to use as we plan to use it. The memo also describes the house as a safe house for leaders whose safety has been threatened. The two notions that the house is simultaneously a, a confidential refuge and a place for broadcasting to the widest possible audience are somewhat in tension. The memo notes, holes in security story used in public YouTube videos. So I know that was a lot, but in this memo, and it sounds like it's a bunch of memos that kind of just pieced together, uh, basically was trying to hide the story uh, to a time where they can dress it up and make it more palatable to the public and specifically people who donated all that money to Black Lives Matter to help Black Lives Matter more. But no one has really seen any results of all that money, right? Even Michael Brown Sr., the father of Michael Brown, who was murdered in Ferguson, he's like, I didn't see any of this money. Like, he has not done anything for me. All I've heard about is this organization who said they were representing my son and others. Um, they All I've seen and heard of them spending the money, right? And so they tried to hide the house until they could dress it up and make it seem like, oh, okay, well, I see why you bought a $6 million house, right? But in essence, they bought the house really just to kind of hang out and kick it. And, you know, we're going to get away when we feel like our lives are in jeopardy and all this other stuff, right? But you know what's interesting? Something interesting else that came out of the story is that Patrice Cullors used to be married to Janiya Khan. I thought they were still married, but apparently they're not because uh, Janiya's a lawyer released the following. It says, after this article was published, so this was the article, you know, that was talked about. It says, a spokesperson for Khan said in a statement, Janiya Future Khan has no knowledge of this house and has never had access to the financials of Black Lives Matter. They have never received uh, payment for any work done by BLM. The Janiya and Patrice LLC was created and controlled by Patrice Colors. Khan was not an officer of the account or officer of the company. Khan separated from Colors in September of 2017 and left BLM shortly after. Well, damn. Tell us how you threw your ex-wife, because you know they're LGBT, you know, their ex-wife under a bus, right? And so uh, Patricia's ex-wife is like, uh-uh, I ain't got nothing to do with it because, you know, you take that kind of money, you got to answer to not just the people, but the feds, right? They want to know what happened to all this money. And so another columnist said this. Well, actually, it wasn't a columnist. It was um, uh, one of the members of the uh, charity. It's a charity organization that basically holds charities accountable. And she said this, which I thought was very telling. Black Lives Matter is like a giant ghost ship full of treasure drifting in the night with no captain, no discernible crew, and no clear direction. So that's all to say that nobody knows what is really going on with Black Lives Matter. It is right now just in shambles with people just spending money on it, whatever they want to spend it on. And so they're like, we don't even know what they're doing with the money. We just keep hearing about these houses and things like that being purchased. And so somebody's in a lot of trouble, right? But my thing is y'all got all that money to the tune of millions, upwards, probably like a hundred million dollars or so really just, you know, in that time frame, you could have really did some life changing things for people, right? Like help the people whose loved ones were murdered by giving them some of the money or actually building safe houses for people who are in danger or to help the homeless or something. You could have did something meaningful, but it was a grift. You know, and these, like I said, these heifers ran off with the money and they're, and they're just so smug about it. Like, who gonna check us? They just mad and all this other stuff. It's like, nah, y'all should answer for that because you know what? Had that been Dr. Umar, they wouldn't have get, let him off the hook. They still ain't letting him off the hook and he at least has a school. I don't know what he's doing. I'm just gonna leave it right there. And a whole host of other people been accused of stealing money, but yet these, you know, women just get to glide and slide and mm, oh well. So anyway, y'all, Y'all tell me what you think about this story. And as it develops, we will surely keep you guys up to date. So for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show, here on YouTube. Peace.